Okay, guys, um, thanks for joining us. I'm glad we could do this on a day like today because, tell you what, earlier this week, it wasn't like this. <laughs> and it's very beautiful down here on the bay in Melbourne. And it's the sort of day that you would enjoy uh, a 3600 Riv just like this. Um, so my name's Dan Jones, welcome to The Boat Brokerage. And this is the test drive video. If you're interested in a detailed walkthrough, I'll pop a link in the description below. Might pop that up on the screen now as well. And you can watch that separately if that interests you. Um, so what do we have? Twin Volvo shaft drives. They are the 370 horsepower um, and they've got approximately 500 hours on the clock. Recently serviced, it will be freshly serviced tomorrow. Um, so we'll be able to provide evidence of the new filters, etc. Um, what can I say? It's a 3600. They're an excellent family all-rounder sports yacht. Um, but in terms of what we're looking at in front of me, if you're new to a sports yacht style of boat, um, if you're coming out of a sports cruiser or if you're coming out of an, an open day boat and you're moving into your first cabin boat, um, these boats um, are quite easy to operate as a solo operator and I'll talk to you about that as we go through the run. Um, what do I have on my right hand? I've got digital throttles. So if you're used to Morse controls, that's a cable going down between the throttle and the engine, it's very different when you get to electronic throttles. They're much lighter to touch and a little bit more pleasurable to drive. I've got my engine diagnostics computer just here. So I've got my fuel flow, got my engine hours, um, and you can cycle through other information. I've got my uh, chain counter, just starboard of the wheel. It's hydraulic steering. This particular boat has been upgraded with a new Raymarine chart plotter, and we also have a new Raymarine autopilot and the side power bow thruster is to port. I'll talk about the rest of the features in the walkthrough. Um, so what we'll do, we'll just get the boat up and moving. I'm currently sitting on 5.5 knots. My trim tabs are operated by these two buttons here. So if you see me operating them, that's what's going on. And another nice feature of this boat is we have this sliding opening window here. So when you're parking the boat, or if you're communicating with people on the bow, you can open that. We also have the opening sunroofs as well for a little bit of ventilation. So um, at a displacement speed, you can cruise this boat anywhere sort of in that five to eight knots before you're really gonna be offending anyone with your wash. So I'm currently sitting on 6.2 knots um, and that's not making waves. So if you're in a no wash zone, you can maintain this speed with ease. And then let's just give it up, uh, give it a, a little bit more more revs, so I was at 1200 revs there before. I'm just coming up through to 1300 revs. Starting to make a little bit of waves, getting seven and a half knots, and let's just bring it up to 1400. Okay, 1400 revs. That's borderline for a no wash zone. So I think at the eight knot speed, um, you can still potter around in most scenarios, but it's here where you want to just decide, are we going to get the boat up on the plane or not? And uh, today we are, so let's get her moving. So just increasing power through 1800 revs, straight up to 2000 revs. You can feel the bow raise on acceleration. I like to power through that. So power through that, come up to 2004, 2005, feel the boat increasing speed. I'm coming up through 15 knots here. I'm gonna give it a little bit more actually. You can hear those turbos kicking in right now. So that's just at 2,700 revs. And now the boat's really starting to move. We're, we're coming through 19 knots speed, a little bit of bow raise. I could trim that out with the trim tabs. I'm not doing it just because I wanna see how much bow raise we have on this boat. Um, at 2,700 revs, we're starting to settle down now, and we'll give it a little bit more. Just head out to see a little bit. So noise levels, totally manageable. Totally manageable on a boat like this. We have the back door open, and I got this window open, but this is not offensive. I could hold a conversation with someone uh, just in the saloon just here, and if you close the doors, you would have even more manageable noise level. So if you're planning on doing some coastal cruising and you're spending a few hours at a time on a boat like this um, up and down the coast, yes, this will be a comfortable boat to do it on. So just sitting on 22, 23 knots at the moment, I'll give it a little bit of a trip tab down. So we'll just feel that. 
we should start to see the wash come forward and the steering will get a little bit tighter as I would expect. So I can see the wash coming forward to my midships there. So if I was in upwind conditions with a little bit of chop across the bay, I might lower the bow just a little bit to get a little bit more V action or V section of the hull into those waves. But what I'm actually gonna do now is just increase the speed. So coming through 23 knots, 3,000 revs, I'm gonna raise those tabs again. 3,100 revs, 20, 26 to 27 knots. Now this is a 31 knot plus boat. I'm probably not gonna do wide open throttle just because it's having a service tomorrow. So what's the point of pushing it? I'll sit it around that 27 knot range for now. Oh, birdie, up in, front, up in front, oh, get out of my way. You go right, I'll go left, there we go. Nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the boat through a turn at 27 knots, 26 knots. Heel angle on these boats is really predictable. So I'm standing at the moment, I'm 5'7", but I've got visibility and I don't have any, um, any safety risks. Right now, right now, I've got good visibility out to port, and these pillars, they're not super thick, so you don't have any dangerous loss of visibility um, like you do on some boats where the pillars are really, really substantial. I'm just gonna try the seat position. It's a single bolster. Yeah, Riv, Riv do good, good work. This is still comfortable, even after all these years. Really comfortable on my bum. I've got a nice armrest just here. I could sit in this position comfortably for hours and hours on end if I was doing a transit up the coast or crossing this bay here in Melbourne, as an example. Um, I'll just give it a little bit of a punch. I'm just gonna check my temperatures, sitting on 85 consistent. Just give it a little bit of a punch. So she really gets up and goes with these shaft drives. I'm just sitting on 29 knots there and I've got more to play with. That's 3,400 revs. And now I'm just gonna come off the speed and sit it back on that 3,100 for now and just settle into what I believe is a sensible cruise speed on this boat. So 27 knots uh, to me seems logical on this boat because you're gonna be burning a lot more diesel at those faster speeds. So we'll play with the trim tabs one more time. You should notice as I drop the nose, this wash, you might even see it on this camera, come forward. And then I'll pull back and it goes a little bit aft. Alrighty. All clear up ahead in deep water. These are not my home waters, that's why I'm just always double checking myself. Now I'm just gonna do another turn to starboard. We'll head in towards the beach where we can um, give you guys a detailed walkthrough. Lovely. Varying my revs from 3,000 to 3,200 gives me a speed return anywhere in that 26 to 28 knots. I do feel 27 is the happy place. If you're used to stern drives, expect the steering to feel um, stiffer on a boat like this because we've got rudders and shafts. So the rudders, they are deflecting the wash uh, or, or, or you know, the, the props are giving me the thrust and the rudders are deflecting that thrust as opposed to what you'd be used to on an outboard or a stern drive, which many of you are going to be transitioning from into a boat like this, expect the turning circles to be a little bit wider and for the steering to feel a little bit harder. So that's normal. Don't be, um, don't be alarmed or don't be concerned by that whatsoever. And what it will do, which you might not be used to, it'll sit on straight lines all day long. So hands off steering, we're, we've, we're just holding a straight line. If, if you weren't confident of your straight line ability, you still have a, you still have an autopilot. So we can cover all bases on this boat. But let's just slow the boat down now. I think that's enough of a demonstration. She certainly goes. 
So coming down through 2,700 revs, that still gives you a comfortable cruise of 23 knots right now. So you probably would do a little bit of trim tab because you've got slight bow raise, albeit not enough to hinder my visibility of 5'7 stature from a seated position, I can still see the horizon. So it's not really the end of the world. Um, and then when you're coming below that 2'7, let's get down 2'7, 2'6, 2'5, sitting on 2'5 is giving us 20 knots. That really does feel like you're hanging the, the back of the boat too much. So I believe you would just come off the plane at that speed because that's gonna be quite an inefficient angle for this style of hull. So you might as well do your 22, 23 or higher or just come off the plane. Come off the plane, burn off that speed and sit the boat on eight knots or thereabouts. So there you go guys. Um, we have all the receipts and the history on this boat. It is getting a fresh service tomorrow. 500 hours on the Volvo shaft drive turbo diesels with a bow thruster, electronic throttles. Um, boats like this, it's kind of like a store of value. The Riviera brand is so well recognized and respected. You put some money in a Riviera, it basically stays quite consistent for long periods of time. And in return, you get great weekends and awesome holidays. So, you know, there's, uh, there really is a lot of positive arguments for owning a Riviera, um, which many, you just ask anyone, I don't even need to sell you on that, ask anyone their opinion on the resale value at the longevity of a Riviera, and um, you'll, you'll get the truth from them. Uh, so yeah, that's it guys, this has been the test drive. If you're interested in the detailed walkthrough, follow the link on the description below. If you wanna learn more about this particular boat, follow the link, which is also in the description below to our website, where we have all the inventory and the service records that you can download. If you're still interested, get in touch. I can show you, or my colleague Nick can show you in person. Um, we can always organize video chats as well if you're not based in Melbourne, which this boat is. Thanks very much. Dan Jones been, has been my name, or is my name. It hasn't been my name. It is my name. <laughs> this has been the Boat Broker. That's what I'm trying to say. Thanks very much. I'll see you on the next one.